Good morning and welcome to Bible Fellowship Apostolic Church. Today is Sunday, March the 24th, 2024. Announcement. Remember, no food or drink other than water in the sanctuary. For online giving, go to BibleFellowshipAC.org. If you want to give via Cash App, go to dollar sign Bible Fellowship AC. Remember, on March the 29th, which is this Friday, we will be having communion service and foot washing this Friday at 7 p.m. Also, please keep in mind, we have an Easter egg hunt on this Saturday, March the 30th, from 12 noon to 2 p.m. here at the church. And the sign-in sheet is on the bulletin for items requested to bring for the Easter egg hunt. Also, remember... Easter Appreciation Sunday is March the 31st, and lunch will be served after service. Report cards for the third nine weeks are due to Sister Olivia as soon as possible. The cleaning team for the week is Team 3. The lawn care team for the week is Group A, Team 3. Special reminders, fasting every Monday from midnight to 3 p.m. and a week of fasting every quarter. Prayer here at the church any hour between 4 and 8 p.m. on the third, fourth, and fifth Mondays, and this first and second Monday, and the first Monday we're off for uh, prayer. And remember, corporate prayers here in the sanctuary every second Wednesday. Palm Sunday by Unknown Arthur. Palm Sunday, also called Passion Sunday commemorates Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem riding a colt. The king entered the city in peace because he is the prince of peace. Jesus chose to ride, to ride a donkey to fulfill the prophecy in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon a colt, the savior of the world humble, meek, lowly, was welcomed by the palm branches and cloak. The crowd chanted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Matthew 21 and 9. Jesus' triumphal entry took place six days before the Passover and one week before the resurrection. Our thought for today by unknown author, God always has something for you, a key for every problem, a light for every shadow, a relief for every sorrow, and a plan for every tomorrow. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Sister Finch for prayer. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah, Jesus. We're going to pray. Hallelujah. We need the power and anointing of God today. Hallelujah. And we're going to ask God to, hallelujah, to move by his spirit, his anointing. In the name of Jesus, God, we just lift you up, Lord God. We just give you praise. We give you glory, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to come into your house today. God, we thank you for every visitor, God, that has come in this house today, God. We ask you, God, that you will continue, Lord, to touch us, Lord God. Oh, God, that we will give you praise. We'll give you glory, Lord. Lord Jesus. Oh God, there's nothing too hard for you, God. Lord, whatever's going on, Lord God, with our people today, God, we ask that you will touch them where, Lord God, you need to touch them, Lord Jesus. You know every situation. You know every, every circumstance. And Lord, we ask you, God, to anoint our praise team today, Lord Jesus. And God, that you will anoint our preaching, the, the preaching today, Lord God, anoint our pastor, oh God, with the power of the Holy Ghost, oh God, to speak, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you today, Lord. We give you praise. Touch our children, our young people, God. We thank you today, God. Let the word, God, hallelujah, Jesus, your word is sharper than any two-edged sword, God. And we pray, God, you take out everything that's not like you today, God. We want to be right, God. We want to go with you, Lord, when you come back because you're looking for a church without a spot of rancor, God. And we thank you today, God. We give you praise and give you glory. Let the anointing of God flow through this church, Lord God. In the name of 
Lord Jesus, God. And we're going to give you glory, and we're going to give you praise. And everybody say in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Hallelujah, my brother. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. You're worthy, Jesus.
Come on, put your hands together.
Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. I want the church to shout hallelujah today. Glory. Hallelujah. Your glory, Lord. Your glory. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Hallelujah. The sweet presence of the Holy Ghost. I come to church, I want to feel his presence. Hallelujah. I want to feel his anointing. Hallelujah. Yeah. I want to sense him. I want, I want him to wrap his arms of love around me. I don't know everybody's reason for coming to church today, but I know the Savior is in this place. Oh, yes. He's in this place. He has dispatched his angels. Even those that are not here, God protected hands is on today. Praise God. And I'm so thankful today. I'd like to welcome each and every one of you here to the service as we do pay off. If you would just stand, Caleb Walker, so glad to have you this morning. She is a guest of Sister Finn. Is it Renee Hardy? So good, she's a guest of Sister Paula. Deacon and Sister Carr and their family are in Alexander City assisting Brother Smith, who's out of town today. Praise God. I'm going to ask you to stand with me. Upon the authority of your word, I have given, it shall be given to me, pressed down, shaken together, running over. I am a tither, I am a giver, I bring them today unto your storehouse. Therefore the enemy is rebuke, the curse is broken, I live on the open heaven, you poured upon me such a blessing 
that there's not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs, better jobs, raises, bonuses, sale, commissions, benefits, settlements, estates, inheritance, interest, income, rebates, checks in the mail, gifts, surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, royalties received, my whole family say walking with God, perfect health, and abundant to walk in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in. I am blessed going out. All that I do will prosper in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We serve. I would like to say, uh, my brother and sister Peterson, your, our prayers is with you, you both and your family, during this time of loss. Amen. And I know sometimes it's difficult understand but God don't make mistakes we, we have to trust him so we do covet you in prayer and again so, so thankful for the visitors today. And uh, today is Palm Sunday. This is the Sunday before Easter. And I know that Sister Naomi, she mentioned, but... This is the beginning of the Holy Week. And uh, we want to prepare ourselves. Because on Friday night we're going to have foot washing and communion at 7 o'clock. Saturday kids going to have their fun at 12 to 2, Easter egg hunt, and then Sunday morning, we come here Easter morning, we're going to have church. We're going to give praise unto our risen Savior, and I'm glad that he rose. Because if he hadn't rose, we wouldn't be here today. So I give honor. I give glory unto him. And I believe that we are living in an hour where we need to really focus on what it is that God wants us to do. Amen. And let me say this to you. Church is not the building. This is just the building. The church is the call out ones. The ones that have chosen to walk and live with God. And see, when we, when we get together... There's a lot of things that can happen when we put our focus on God. Amen. And I believe that God has some great things, some awesome things for the people of God. And the devil, in, in this hour, he's going to try to do his best to deceive, seduce, and keep you from the will of, and the purpose of God. But you have to be diligent. You have to make up your mind that you want to serve God.
church is not something that you just go to on Sunday and then you live like you want to live Monday through Saturday. That's not church. The church is a living organism. It is something that we do every day, seven days a week. We just come to the building to get refreshed, to get renewed for fellowship, support. There are times when we need the strength of somebody else that we can't make it by ourselves. If you think you can make it by yourself, you, 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 the devil has already deceived you. You're not going to get into heaven by yourself. Somebody's going to help you along the way. Now, I'm going to tell you, when you stand before Jesus, you're going to be by yourself. But before you get to that place, the Bible said love one another. Amen. So we need one another. We need church. We need fellowship. And so many folks sometimes feel as though they can do it without this. I know we got live streaming going on. But that's okay. But you need to come into the house of God. The Bible said, forsake not the assemblies of yourself as the manner of some. Amen. I know there are some folks that are not physically able to be in the church. But even the man in Jesus' day, the one that needed healing, his friends tore up the rooftop to get him to Jesus. That's how important it was to get to Jesus. Now, it doesn't mean that the Lord cannot heal you by the spoken word. But we need to understand that we need one another, we need prayer, we need unity. Amen. In the book of Matthews, chapter 21, in verse number 1. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to best see unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied in a coat with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, you shall say, the Lord had need of them, and straightway he will send them. And all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughters of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek, and sitting on the ass in a coat, a form of an ass. And 
the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them and brought their ass and the coat and put on them their clothes and they set him their own. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way and others cut down branches from the trees and the straw them in the way, throw them in the way. And the multitude that went before that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord Hosanna in the highest. And when he was come unto Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for being so kind and so merciful unto us. God, you have orchestrated this service today. You have, Lord God, put in the heart of the people to be here. And Father, I pray that your will be done. God, I thank you so much for being so kind to us. And Lord, I'm asking you today, God, as we leave this place, God, let us be better than we came. We give you thanks, we give you glory in Jesus' name. Let's clap our hands unto the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. As I said, Palm Sunday is observed on the Sunday before Easter and marks the beginning of the Holy Week. It commemorates the day when Jesus entered Jerusalem as the Savior and the King. And we can go back in the Word of God and and read in the book of Matthew, chapter 21, the book of Mark, chapter 11, book of Luke, chapter 19, and, and St. John, chapter 12, and all of the Gospels made reference unto this event. Jesus coming. Approaching Jerusalem. Coming into Jerusalem. And um, he instructed his dis two of his disciples to find a, a donkey tied by the entrance of the city. And he rode into Jerusalem on the donkey fulfilling the prophecy from the book of Zechariah. And that's Zechariah 9 and, and 9. And the crowd welcomed him with great enthusiasm. They were happy, they were excited. And I say to you this morning, how excited are you about our Savior? See, we know how to worship God when the music is going. When things are happening, but do we know how to worship God now? When things are just quiet. 
Are you here to worship him or are you here to praise him or are you here to lift him up? See, the people, when they knew that he was coming into the city, that was, that was something that Jesus did that he hadn't done before. He was revealing who he was. If you go back and read scripture after scripture, when the Lord would heal somebody, or the, the, when the Lord would cast out devils, the, he, would, he would say, don't tell anybody. He did not want them to know who he was at the time. But this particular time, he put all of that aside. And there was something else about Jerusalem, Brother Frank. Jerusalem wasn't one of those places that Jesus went a lot to minister. And the reason Jesus did not go because he knew how the people felt about him. You remember he said a prophet is not honored in his own time. So you, you find in the scriptures where he, he ministered mostly in Galilee and Nazareth. But he wasn't in Jerusalem. But now he knows he needs to go to Jerusalem. And he tells his disciples, I want you to go and I want you to find this, 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 this coat. And when you get there, it's going to be tied up. And if anybody say anything, tell them that the Lord had need of them. And they will straightway let them go. And they did as the Lord instructed them. Don't you know it's good to obey Jesus? If you do it just like Jesus tell you to do it, everything's going to be all right. The Lord said, if they question, just tell them that the Lord had need of them. And they would straightway. They ain't going to argue. They ain't going to complain. You see, when we choose to do it the Lord's way and do exactly what he tells us to do, there is not a lot of tension. There is not a lot of struggle because God is ordering our steps. God is, it, it, we, we just need to be obedient. He done gave you the instruction. He done told you what to do. It's just like when they went to Jerusalem. Jesus told them to go tarry at Jerusalem until they be endued with power from on high. He did not tell them how long it's going to take them. But he told them to go tarry until. And see, that's the problem sometimes we have. We know God done said, but we don't understand the until. Lord, won't you just give me a little hint of how long I got to do this? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be so nice if the Lord just right now, he done told you that he's going to bless you with a thousand dollars. But wouldn't it be nice if he said right now? Lord, I need it right now. So, see, some of us came this morning needing it right now. Some of us came to church this morning, and I'm not just saying money, but there are, some of us came this morning with issues and, 
in things that we want the Lord to handle right now. But see, when you put it in his hand, when you stop trying to figure it out and stop trying to say, you know, if I do this or if I do that, just put it in his hand. He will take care of it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we, we, we have a hard time. But Jesus just told them, I want you to go. So they went. And when they went, the crowd welcomed him with great enthusiasm, spreading their, their coats and, 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 and palm branches on the road. They shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who come in the name of the Lord. They knew, Brother Frank, they knew that this was the, the promised Messiah. Because, see, these folk knew the scripture. They knew it. You know why he went to Jerusalem? Because Jerusalem was the place where the center of all the religious folks was. See, Jesus decided that he wants to go right there where all the naysayers, all the Pharisees, all the Sadducees, all those folks that they, he knew what they would do. He, he knew that the same folk that was shouting, Hosanna, in just a few days are going to say, Persecute him. Persecute him. He knew it. And he came in on the coat. But you know something about a king supposed to have come into the city riding a stallion because it shows the people triumph, victory. But to come in on a coat, it meant something else. And Jesus could have came in on a stallion. He could have came in on whatever he wanted to come in on. But he wanted to come in on a donkey. And the reason the Jewish tradition Zechariah prophesied, referred to the Messiah as a king who would redeem Israel peaceably. The donkey symbolizes humility. He wasn't a war horse. He wasn't that stallion that the king was riding, saying victory. It when it comes to us, the donkey also represents Christ's willingness to bear our burden and suffer for humanity. Humility. Humility. He 
could have did whatever he wanted. He could have came in however he wanted to come in. He could have said whatever he wanted to say. He could have rewrote the story. But the Bible said he did this to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet. Jesus' choice of the donkey teaches us that true leadership involves serving others rather than demanding them. Humility. I just want to deal with that just a little bit. If you don't mind. When we we started Wednesday night talking about humility. The opposite of humility is what? Pride. The definition of pride is a attitude of self-sufficiency. Self-importance and self-exhortation in relations to God. That's what pride is, self-sufficient. I can handle this myself. And we are good at handling things ourselves. Notice I said handling things I'll say. It may not be handled like the Lord, but we know how to handle things I'll say. Ain't getting no amen today. Guess I'm going to have to stay right there for a minute. We like to say, I, Lord, I trust you. What does trust mean? Trust is you going to find a coat tied on a tree. And when you get there, if the man say, off, oh, you tell him the Lord had need of it. Trust is a little bit more than faith. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times we say we got faith, we trust God. Yes, I trust God. Really? So, if you trust in God, Trust in now. Understand now. Trust in God. If you trust in God, where are you going to be on Sunday morning? Getting real quiet. That's okay. 
If you trust in God, where are you going to be on Wednesday night? If you trust in God, where are you going to be on the Mondays when we got prayer? If you trust in God, when it's your time to cut the grass, where are you going to be? If you trust in God, when it's your time to clean the church, where are you going to be? If you trust in God, when it's time for you to give, what you going to do? You can't tell me you trusted in God and at the same time say, Lord, you know, I look at what I got, and all I got is enough for me and my children. And if, 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 if I give you what we got, we ain't going to have enough for ourselves. All I got is enough that once I eat, or take care of my, me and my, my children, we ain't going to have nothing else. We just going to die. But you know something? The, 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 this is what the prophet said. He said, baby, I understand. Don't worry about it. I'll go get some, and then I'll come back and give you some more. So you, you can fix me something because that's how we handle things. When somebody tell us that I ain't got enough, we just leave it alone. But the prophet didn't say that. This is what he said. He said, make me a cake first. And some of us will read that and say, that's kind of selfish. thinking about my, me and my children. I just told you I didn't have enough. But the prophet said, make me a cake first. What the prophet was saying to her, don't you worry about whether or not you got enough. Just obey God. See, that's the problem that we have. We look at our pocketbook too much. We look at our sufficiency. We look at our ability. We look at our schedule. We look at our lifestyle. We look at our time. That's not trusting God. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. All of it. See, sometimes the reason God don't move in our situation because we still trying to do it ourselves. You ain't, you ain't took your hands off it yet so that God can do it himself. God don't want you to get no glory. God don't want you to get no praise. God wants you to know that he has done it and he has done it alone. But something else that the prophet was doing for the lady, he was instilling trust in her. She knew she was, her back was against the wall. And just that act of obedience, she was ready to do what the Lord wanted her to do. And then later on, what happened? Her son got sick. same God that 
David is the same one now. See, sometimes God lets you go through a tough situation just to build your faith and your trust because he knows what's coming down the road. And sometimes we don't realize we complaining, we are frustrated, we are fussing with God about what's going on in your life. And you don't realize that God's getting you ready for something that's bigger. God's getting you ready so that you'll be able to Respond the right way. Humility. So sometimes we got to pray, God. Some, sometimes we don't believe that. Well, God turned, he turned, Jesus turned water into wine that time, but he ain't doing that no more. Yes, he can. Because he said he was the same. He's still healing. He's still delivering. He's still making a way out of no way. But see, we got to be the ones that realizes not about me. We, as long as we try to C.S. Lewis called pride the great sin. It is the root of all other voices or vices, and has caused misery throughout history. The devil himself failed due to pride, and it remains the deadliest sin he is saying. Pride. And you know something? It's hard sometimes to To detect pride. <clears throat> no, it's not. Because when God speaks and you know his voice and he's speaking to you, What we do, because of our intelligence, our educated minds, we try to figure it out. We try to decipher it instead of saying, not my will, but that, whatever God. Because, see, don't you know when God speaks something to you, you're not going to know everything at that moment? You're not. When the Lord told Joseph that he going to rule his family, he didn't tell Joseph everything he had to go through. When Gideon that mighty man of valor had 30,000 
oh man, I can, I can, I can, I can deal with it. I can take care with thirty thousand. He he was he was relying on his numbers. He was relying on his sufficiency to take care of the problem. Then the Lord said, wait a minute, Gideon, you got too many. And then he said, the Lord said, ask Gideon, ask, how many are you too scared? See, Gideon didn't even know. In that 30,000, he, he already had, he had a bunch of them that were scared. He didn't know what he would do. He didn't know what he had. See, sometimes we think we know what we got. We ain't got, we don't know what we got. And so he asked them who all was afraid. They left. And then there was left 20. You didn't still felt real good. I can handle it. But the Lord said, you still got to me. Said, give them the water test. If they lap like a dog, when they get in the water, you send them home. And 20 and some thousand went home. All he had left was 300 men. And you know where his self-sufficient went? Totally away. Now he was ready for what God had for him to do because he got his eyes off of what he could do. Now he had to trust God. You see, sometimes God going to subtract so that you can learn because he got a ministry now. God is about putting folk. God got a place. God's got a divine appointment for his people. There have been some, some of you in him that have been praying, God, use me. Yes, you said, Lord, use me. And some of us have said, use me the way you want to use me. We done got up and sung that song. We sang it loud, sang it with passion. But then when God started using you like he wants to use you, we get mad and get upset and we want to run and hide. God wants you to trust him. And until you trust him, until you start relying on him, until you stop trusting in what you know or what you think and say, Lord, this, I can't do it without you. God, I need you. You know what that is? That's humility. That is not pride. God, I can't do it without you. You got to stop fighting you got to stop trying to figure it out. you got to stop trying to think you know it and just back up to God. You just got to back it up to him. I'm going to be up here. Because
because, see, God won't do it because we got our hands in it and we want to control it. We want to say when and when not. Jesus, when he was getting ready to go to the cross, he knew what he was fixing to go through. He said, take this cup from me. But then immediately he said, but nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Sometimes we come to church looking for a church. And we need to be coming looking for Jesus. It's not the church that we want. It's the Jesus that we want. And if we get Jesus, Jesus will lead you the way he desires. He's the Lord and Savior. He's the way maker. He's the burden bearer. He's your doctor. He's your lawyer. He's your husband. He's your wife. He's your girlfriend. He's your boyfriend. See, some of these things we, we, we worry so we get so caught up and the Lord just saying, if you seek me first, He knows what you got need of. Come on, let's stand today. Like I said, I don't know all the needs that you have. But I know you came to church today because there was something that right there. I need the Lord. I need him. That's what I'm telling you. I need him. I'm telling you right now. If you came to this church today, if you would just humble yourself and come to this altar, and say, God, I'm here today, and you know what I need. You know what I'm up against. You know what's happening in my life. I need you. You know my situation. You know my family. You know my circumstance. You know what I'm doing. Brother and Sister Peterson, I want you to come. We want to pray for y'all today. I want to open up this altar if you want to come. I'm inviting you to come. You know what you need. You know what your situation. You know what your circumstance is. If you need salvation, I'm going to 
relax the ministers to come and pray. Help us pray for those. That's it. Let the river of my worship flow to you. Lord, come on, lift your hands today. All, all over this place, let's lift our hands. Let the river of my worship flow to you. Like streams in the valley. Like streams in the valley. They swell with the rain. They swell with the rain. Let the Hallelujah. Of Let the songs of my heart rise to bless your name. Flow to you. Flow to you. Flow to you. somebody else. Come on. You don't, if God is dealing with your heart right now, you need to just come on. This is your time. God's waiting on you. To you. God's waiting on you. Glory to you. God, let, let me give it to you. God, let me give all my hurts. You. God, let me give all my pain. Lord, I pray oh, yes. In all I do, that the river of my worship flow to you. Like streams in the valley. They swell with the rain. No, 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 Let the songs down. of my heart rise to bless your Come name. On. Come on, Lord Tanks. I want you to reach out. Come on. Reach out all Lord over this place. You. Reach out in this building right. That's it. Hallelujah. my worship, Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Glory to you. Glory yes. to you. Glory to you. Yes, God. Yes, God. Let the river yes. of my worship yes. flow to you. Lord, I pray. Yes. Lord, I pray. Yes. Lord, I pray. Flow 
Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Yes, God.
believe him? Do you believe him? Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hand. 